<laughs> well, here we are again. Follow me to Apex, my friends. Reaper Hunter Twenty Three here, welcoming you back to Let's Play Dragon Fable. All right. So last time we got right through the uh, prologue, or the rest of the prologue quest. I do believe after this, Twilly directs us to go see Lady Celestia. Um, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna go back to Oaklore real quick. Train the rest of my uh, stats. I think we will go see Lady Celestia just because. I like the little graphical glitch we got there. We'll talk to that guy in a minute, or er, in a little while when I level up again. Uh, train stats, there we go. Until then, we need the uh, what? Until then, we need the dragon amulet and such. But like I said earlier, I'm not worried about buying that right at the moment. I'll make up whatever I skip past or whatever I have to ignore later when I get it. Well, here I am. Celestia said, just go to the circle cave and wait outside, but she didn't say how long. Maybe I should have packed a snack. That's new. <laughs> they arrived in a phone booth. So, in 2006-ish, approximately, when I was playing this game for the first time and happened upon this quest, it was really... Either Doctor Who wasn't super, super big in nerdy culture yet, or I just didn't grasp that it was because I was, I don't know, second grade. Artix. Greetings. But yeah, that reference went right over my head. Artix? Artix? Um, Cicero. Hiya. Cicero? Hey. Who are you? You don't remember me? This must be a point in time before you two met. Hunter, this is Zoom. We really need your help. We have come back to your present, our past, to take you back to our, your future, our present, to help save town. I'm confused. Me too, actually. Falcon Reach is in danger? Explain again, slowly. Okay, but first thing. We're talking about the town of Battleon, not Falcon Reach. We've come from the future. Badalon is in great danger from a being called Ex Exodus. We all agree that we need the power of a dragon lord to confront this beast, and in our time, you are the greatest dragon lord. Then why can't I help in your time? 
Okay, following you so far. Oh, in our time, you were knocked out just before the fight with Exodus, and your dragon won't listen to anyone but you. So Cicero made this time-traveling phone booth to go back and get an earlier, younger version of you to ride your dragon. You're gonna have a most excellent adventure through time. <laughs> I get that reference now that I'm older, too. No way, no way. Yes way, Ted. Wow. <laughs> That's great. Stop it. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I have questions. Ask, and we will answer what we can. What's a phone booth? Never mind that. Okay, but how, well, how did you have time to build a machine that travels in time after I was knocked out? Easy. I came up with the idea for it when Arctic said we needed another version of you. Right then, the phone booth appeared next to us. I guess after we go back, I invent it and send it back to us when we need it. God, that's... Ugh, oh, time travel. This isn't, this isn't the last time that this won't make sense in this game, let me tell you. So I have to cram in there with you guys? Yes. Yep. Nope. What? Yeah, we just have to be near it to time travel. What? <laughs> then why did we stuff ourselves in there? I wanted to see if we could fit. Okay, if you're ready, let's go. The future awaits. Several years in the future. Alright, so I did get this, because before I played Dragon Fable, I played their other game, Adventure Quest, and this was the town in Adventure Quest. I only played that. That did not hold my attention nearly as long as this game did, and I've yet to ever go back to that one. So this is the future, huh? What happened? What do you mean? Well, the colors look different, perspective looks weird, the graphics look, I don't know, different. We try not to talk about it. Okay, so this is... So where is this exodus that I need to fight? Right there. Where? I don't see it. It's right... There. <laughs> oh, now I see it. How am I supposed to fight that thing? It's taller than that guardian tower. I think you will be surprised to see how powerful your dragon has grown. If you are prepared, we need to get you on your dragon quickly. Alright, where is the little wizard? Here it is, you should be fully powered and ready to fight. You won't need your dragon, am dragon amulet, the other you has left it on the dragon. So I just climb aboard? In theory, yes, we've never tried it before, so it might just eat you. Super. Thanks. Wow, this feels... right. How do I look, Artix? You look like a true dragon lord, are you ready? I guess, wish me luck. So this battle is basically meant to uh, entice you into seeing what the uh, dragon fights are like. <laughs> Although in my experience, I always get mollywopped when I fight with my dragon. Let me tell you, I rarely ever, w I would rarely ever win. Um, maybe I just don't do it right. I forgot. Oh. Not necessarily this fight, but all the other ones, especially since you don't get all of these to begin with. You have to do quests and stuff to level up your dragon. It gets to be kind of tedious because it will eventually be the same thing over and over. Uh... Fighting this guy is not so bad, though. Um... Smash again. Burn. Jesus. Alright, I gave this dude the business. He barely got in a word edgewise. Or, he barely got a word in edgewise. Uh, just regular old attack, I guess. Nice. You have done it, Exodus has fallen. Yeah, right on to the town bakery. Thank you for saving Badalon. It's time to send you back to your own time. I don't get to meet myself? Bad idea, the universe might end. Okay, I can skip it then. <laughs> now that you've seen what is to come, you have the chance to change things. 
Because we were forced to interfere with time, we might have caused a split, the timeline to split. This event, this event might never occur in your future, but we thank you for saving our timeline. You are a great hero. As soon as the other you comes around, I will tell him of what you have done for us. I'm sure he will be proud. Sorry that I knocked a hole in your time stream. The time stream might stick around for the time hole might stick around for a while before the universe heals. Be careful with it. You may never know. Or you never know where you will end up. Goodbye and good luck with your future. See you later or earlier. You know what I mean. So long, hero. Thank you again. We have defeated the mighty Exodus, saved the town of the future Battleon, and glimpsed what the future holds for you. <laughs> what you do with the sneak peek into your t own future is up to you. Alright, the rest of this stuff is, uh, more for the sake of your dragon and all that. I don't really have... No. Well, I guess we can talk to her real quick. Alright, so the way that she holds her teacup and the way that her other arm is positioned, half the time at a glance it looks like she's cradling a baby. Like, just put a baby in this general area and it looks like she's holding it. <laughs> anyway. Hello, welcome to Sunbury's Grove. Lady Cel Greetings, Lady Celestia has told me much about you. I am Alicia, her apprentice. You're always welcome here in the grove, whether it is for advice on the reason of training a dragon companion, or if you simply need to rest. I'm tracing training Elisa, or Eliza, maybe? Eliza, we'll go with that one. Eliza in the ways of dragon magic. I'll be setting her tasks when I'm not busy overseeing your dragon's growth and training. My first project will be working on primal dragon training. I want to help them focus their elemental powers and see about new skills. But that will take me quite some time to figure out. I'm very new and there's so much to learn. To be honest, I'm a little homesick. Lady Celestia is so nice, but things are so different here. There's so much I don't know where you're from. You'll do well, Eliza. I'm sure of it. You have so much potential, but there's done. Okay. Well. Yeah, so we came here to take care of that quest, I suppose. Boatman? There's a boatman, it's a caravan. Too fucking bitch. I'm gonna quit my dagger again. Alright, so, at about this point, uh, the orb saga is the primary, or the orb quests are the primary focus of the main book. The big bad man in the red armor, Sepulcher, from the end of the last recording session. He's trying to collect all of those and merge them and throw the world in disarray and all that. We try to get the orbs before, or the elemental orbs before he can do anything about, or before he can get them. Blah blah blah. And then there's other stuff we can do here. Um, I'll get around to that eventually. Elemental Foothills, Bacon Worm, Raven Loss. Raven Loss is one I'm going to save towards the end, after we do some stuff, because, well, I really like Raven Loss, <laughs> actually. But I think what we're going to do first, actually, let's explore the town a little bit, since we're... So, we already looked in the, uh, in there. This is Yolger and his uh, apprentice Conan. He's got a, a couple quests. For a level 10 weapon, I'd need... Yeah, okay. But the problem with those is that they don't really... He's got a couple of quests for the sake of just doing them, and then he's got a really long chain in the form of the Fire War, which we'll get to, don't worry. My name is Yolger, and I run the weapon shop here in town. Behind me is my new apprentice, Conan. Wow, a real adventurer. I am honored to make your acquaintance. I am learning how to make basic weapons right now. Soon my mage friend, mage friend is going to teach me how to enchant them with fire. 
fire. Talking about new weapons, I'm going to need a shipment. I'm going to need a shipment picked up in two weeks if you are looking for work. Check back then. In the meantime, see if I have anything that might aid you in your next quest. So that was him. We'll be seeing more of him later, don't worry. Alright, so... It's funny that we, they were talking about how we didn't meet Zoom yet, when we definitely haven't met anyone. We didn't... That was the first we saw of Artix, and the first that we had actually interacted with Cicero. Hi, I'm Cicero, the mad magical weaponsmith. If you're looking for the highest quality items, step inside of my superstore of savings. Choose your own adventure quest. Um, he's got some stuff. I don't remember exactly what any of these are. We're gonna... Ah! I didn't necessarily want to get thrown into that. I was hoping for, like, maybe a little bit of lead-in dialogue. <laughs> but he blew up the world, so that's cool. God dang it, Cicero. Complete quest. Interesting. I'll try that again. That was another little play. He, he also controls all of these things. The orbs. That, uh... <clears throat> you can have houses, which don't really do anything, really. At least to my knowledge, they're just kind of a cosmetic thing. All of those are dragon coin purchases. We'll go down and to the left a little, or down and to the right a little. I don't... The bank? I guess that's a dragon amulet thing. Maybe I'll run around in the first chapter with my other character. That's one way to avoid having to buy it twice if I didn't want it to. Erwin Dundee. Crikey, have you been to the zoo yet? Uh, we're okay for now. I'm pretty sure that's like real world purchases I could make if I wanted to. I'm cool with that. But I figure, give a little tour of the town real quick. Uh, use portal? I thought I could only use it at night. Anyway, this little spot leads you to Raven Moss, which... I think this was one of the first areas to have its own dedicated background music. Besides, like, maybe Falcon Reach. I could be wrong. But I... I think the background song here is one of the reasons that it was like one of my favorite quest chains for a long time. Not to mention this slick dude right here, Tonix, he is one of my favorites. We will get to learn more about him later. I was just showing you what that did. I don't like how it teleports me to the middle of this every time. Um, can I examine that? No, it's just kind of a thing. All right. If we came back at night, that the portal would, like, be super glowy and cool looking. Oh, let's have a chat with you. It's so peaceful here. Yeah. Um, Statue of Warlick. That's weird. This one was good because it was like a, uh, this one was funny because it's like a voice acted event. Greetings, Rogue, and welcome to the, here, we can do this one because this is a one-off, it's just for fun. Welcome to the making of Falcon Reach Idol. With me, with your host, me, Zbox, theater master extraordinaire, George Lowe and staff members Cicero and Lim have all voiced their own NPCs. Serenity, the character voiced by 
Alina Wild Lime or is, was voiced by Alina while Lime Lamoglin was voiced by Nithera. That was okay. Eredix voiced himself in the commercials between Acts One and Two. You might have have you might have some questions about your opponents too. I can answer that. We use your character in a cutscene. We have a character model stand in for you during the animation. I skipped over part of that. As the game as the game grew more and more advanced, so did Mr. Guy. He finally got a total overhaul and became his alter ego, Mr. Green Guy. Mr. Green Guy can do a bunch of cool things that you, the player, never see, which makes him really useful in cutscenes. Mr. Test Guy is used to make sure we have the right monster scaling. If a Sneevel were taller than you, it wouldn't look right or fit into its boxes. Regardless of how the guys are used, they're all your stuntmen standing in for you until we're ready to have you play your own part. On with the show. So we'll do this one because I remember this being a lot of fun. It was a big deal because it was like their first voice acted quest. I thought it was going to be this big leap going forward, but voice acting is still few and far between, or voice acted lines are still few and far between. Not that it matters, the story is still engaging. Without it. Falconreach, a small town with big name heroes. You'll find everything here, from friendly innkeepers to uptight undead slayers. Alright. Mad magic makers. <laughs> to your science loving host, with little to lose and the most to gain. We're talking three talented contestants and giving them an opportunity to entertain, educate, and amaze, all in the name of winning a spot as the assistant to the most logical smith in lore, me! I realize I might have made a mistake here. Lim isn't around town yet. That's not a big deal. It's time to meet your judging panel. She may make your meals and store your gear, but she can judge more than who'll pay their bill on time. Serenity is here to share her sweet take on our contestants' talent. Sorry I keep adjusting this. And he may have accidentally turned Falcon Reach Guardian Tower into a fish, but you can beta Cicero will wax eloquent <laughs> with his praise if our contestants are present tonight. Lim is so upset that he had to say that. Artix. Nice. And finally, say hello to the judge with the snazziest glasses and even sassier comments, George Lowe. I do this judging bit from time to time because the snarky wit you get from your run-of-the-mill commentators just doesn't crush enough souls. <laughs> and where else would I get enough tears to mix with my powdered fruit drink? I'll tell you where. Nowhere, Sonny Jim. So get ready to be amazed by an animal act blown away by the talents of a mechanical-minded model and flabbergasted by the martial feats of Falcon Reach's own hero. This is Falcon Reach Idol. I love how many people are just got little cameos in the background. And their sprites aren't even different. They're just all standing. Like, uh, with maybe the exception of Yolger. Who gave you a gong? <laughs> I thought you could use a hand with your transition. <sighs> Celebrity judges. They might drive up the show's ratings, but they'll drive me mad. Well, I guess he doesn't want to speak anymore. For our first act, we have Aria and her amazing tog tricks. Let's hope they can all work together to impress our judges. <laughs> Thank you. 
classic tog. Let's see what the judges have to say. Good choice of animal. I like togs. They're really useful for guarding shops and apparently for pet acts. Not so much for inspiring meditation, though. You know, Cicero doesn't sound quite as, quite as crazy as his uh, later dialogue will let on. You can't really contemplate what the sound of one tog barking is, for example. See? There you go. Done. Finito. Meditation over. Much better to contemplate what the color of green feels like. What? Now there is something you can sink your metaphorical mental teeth into. <laughs> if your mind had teeth, yours might. Mine, mine doesn't. My teeth are in my mouth. I think it was wonderful. Your togs are adorable and so are you. It's amazing how someone so young can have such a way with the animals. Can't you imagine all those darling toggies running about his shop? I can definitely see you winning a place as Lim's assistant. Those are... togs? Is that what you call them? Sounds like someone wanted a dinosaur that could play fetch. My advice? Get yourself a pack of Labradoodles. Now that's an animal with a name that'll draw crowds. B plus for effort though, kiddo. Oh, poor Aria. Harsh. Uh, thanks, judges, for those insightful comments. So, uh, on to our next contestant. Is this one me? Now a message from our sponsors. Complete quest. That was just all an intro. Okay. From the haunted forests 